Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to do another little distro review and we want to have a look at Seduction. So Seduction released an off-point release in the honor of Debian's 30th year anniversary, which was a few weeks ago. I downloaded this a while ago, have not had a chance to spin up the distribution yet. But Seduction is a really nice Debian-based distribution, which is based on Debian SID. And, of course, Debian SID is the testing or the rolling branch. So if you were to be running Debian and want the latest software, maybe the latest things are experimenting with Debian that will go into the next release, the SID branch gives you those updates. What Seduction does is it takes all of those and it purifies them, anything that's little buggy or whatever else they toss out anything that's not buggy they keep in there and so with seduction you effectively have a rolling release debian based on the current trend in experimental design so what they have is they have a lot of packages that are more up to date but it's still the Debian base instead of like the Arch base. And so those that want to run Debian but don't like how uh, old Debian packages can tend toward, Seduction is a really good model for you to follow. Now, we'll have a brief look here at their uh, release note for the uh, latest one, which is called the Standing on the Shoulder of Giants. And this is a totally awesome uh, wallpaper here. And, uh, you know, get this giant cool like space turtle, I guess, with, a, I don't know, uh, is it a bunch of elephants holding up jellyfish or how half the world? I don't even know, but it's really cool. All right. So uh, this is the Standing on the Shoulders of Giants special release. This is an unscheduled release for a special occasion. Debian GNU Linux, who whose unstable branch some of us have been following for over 20 years, celebrates its 30th birthday on 8 16 23 and uh, we all think that is worthy of honor they talk about the old history where this came from and um how debian maintains 100 free this is actually uh this is actually new to me i didn't know this debian actually utilizes the characters for toy story to be their uh, their names. So yeah, I learned something new, right? So the first one was codenamed Buzz from Toy Story. Of course, I don't know what character is Bookworm. Um, let me know. <laughs> Who's Bookworm? I'll have to look it up later. Uh, but of course, the thing about Buster. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think back all the versions of Debian that I've used have indeed been Toy Story. Um, so anyway, uh, they say here it all started with uh, Nopix. Of course, uh, Nopix is really nice for good testing or more like a live branch system. And uh, so they really kind of get into there. Now, Seduction works with various maintainers. Presently, they're offering a Plasma, LXQT, XSCE, XORD, and NOX. They do not presently have GNOME, Mate, or Cinnamon because there's no specific maintainer. If you are a maintainer of software and we'd like to take those up, of course, you can uh, reach out to the team and uh, help them out with that. Of course, if you want to use one of those, uh, you're not stuck with just the ones they have. You can still install them from the repository. It's just they don't have point releases with that as the only desktop environment. So you could spin it up and then remove the old one if you would like to run one of those ones. So uh, what they have here now, this is one of the things where they, they agree with Debian's um, the Debian's non-free and and contributor uh, policies. However, they actually do install by default non-free packages, and they tell you exactly what those are. And those are specifically things for hardware. Basically, the new version that uh, Debian does, where they're separating out the hardware versus the like the non-free hardware versus the non-free software. Uh, drivers. Th that really is what they're doing here is they're installing some of these by default. Now they have a script by which you can uninstall these. So they list everything that's here from the non-free, everything that's here from the contrib, all things which are going to be working. You'll see, you know, Intel microprocessor, you'll see Broadcom. So your Broadcom might work with this if that was something you were having issues with. A lot of Broadcom, Atheros, wireless cards. So mostly it's just a lot of hardware stuff. 
Now, it's not the installer does not currently offer the ability to deselect those. However, you can remove them from the system either before or after the install. And this right here is going to bring me into one negative that I found. They have, uh, according to their documentation, they have a series of scripts that will help with some administrative tasks. One of those being the remove a non-free script. And I went into my gnome boxes here where I tested this out and I was able to run this and it took out all of that non-free hardware, all of the non-free software is completely removed from my particular version of Seduction. The problem that I found is that while they do say in a few different places that they have a number of scripts to help with the ease of things, I cannot find an all-inclusive list of what those scripts are. So I have no idea what those scripts are. I haven't a clue. Um, I'm sure if you dig line by line through the documentation as they are relevant, you might see them. This is where I found the remove non-free script is inside of the documentation about free software. But I could not find whether in the owner's manual or on the forum or on the website anywhere else a comprehensive list of all of the administrative scripts that they have. I was hoping, you know, maybe there's some some GUI tool in the software or in the in the operating system that showed us what those were, and I did. So if you are a seduction contributor uh, and you're watching this, that's one suggestion I have. Get us a list of the, a comprehensive list of all these things and either put it in the owner's manual, uh, owner's manual, I don't know, put it in the user's manual, uh, which is excellent. The user's manual is very well organized. It's it's one of the best uh, user's manual that I've seen on a Linux distribution. Let's just go ahead and have a brief look at it. Uh, so you can download it as a PDF, but here is the web-based version. You can toggle the menu on and off. And then over here, there's just a number of different things. So here's a welcome, here's a quick start, and then you can come down and you can click on these guys here. You'll see the specific chapters. So here's like terminal and console type stuff. And um, this is where you're actually able to find information about running the terminal, uh, using things like that. Here's, uh, you know, here you can uh, uh, you can execute a script just by, you know, dot slash name of the script. <laughs> Give me the name of the script, please. Let me know. Uh, but you can actually see that uh, it, it really works very well. And uh, the owner's manual here, user's manual, is is very easy to follow. So you can kind of see what the um, uh, what the system here looks like. So overall, this is a really nice uh, distribution. Now you might ask, what's the difference between this and just running Debbie and Sid? So somebody asked that on the forum. Uh, what is the difference? This guy's like, hey, I'm kind of caught down to these two, what's the difference? And basically they just say, what's the difference is that SID is not an officially a uh, released as a distribution. It's just an extra repository you can add. Seduction, however, is a distribution regularly released based on that particular repository. In other words, they look at it, they curate it, they fix the bugs or uh, keep the packages rolled back, and then they will release a rolling based version of distribution. Now they do have their own kernel. Now mind you that this article here is now uh, over two years old, uh, seven of 21. Right now I'm recording this video in nine of 23. So they say their kernel is very up to date, 513. That's like Linux Mint level kernels right there. <laughs> okay, uh, and a few new scripts to, to get the funny joke. That's I think what Linux Mint is currently running, but it is an old kernel. Uh, and I accidentally clicked the button back there. Um, and they have a few scripts to ease the handling. I just couldn't find a comprehensive list of those scripts. If they're out there, someone please tell me where they are. I did look. I did do some due diligence. Spent about a half an hour looking for them. Couldn't find them. Uh, they provide support for the release on the forum and IRC. Recommend seduction for weathered users or users who are willing to learn. The willing to learn part is certainly... Um, certainly good because it's it is very much like Debian and there's not a lot of GUI tools to help with basic things seduction and Sid want to be uh, dist upgraded regularly um, at least once a week and we recommend doing that in the terminal of course to do that you need to be as a uh, root user now I installed this the installer is Calamaris and uh, the installer I was careful to check 
uh, there's there is a way to enable or disable the uh, root user. I set to disable it, but I'm still not added to the pseudo group, so I'd have to go back and add myself to the pseudo group. So I just dropped into do to just do su to get into there, which works for me. So in short, seduction is like assisted living. Welcome. There you go. So there you have it. You have your assisted living. So let's go ahead and have a look at what the distribution itself happens to look like. So here we are inside of GNOME boxes. Let me go ahead and full screen that. It looks like it is going full screen quite nicely. And uh, I am running the LXQT, and I chose LXQT because it has been a good few years since I've done anything with LXQT. Uh, it is a fairly new distribution based on XFCE and L uh, LXDE, I think it was, which is now defunct, migrating itself over into LXQT, which gives us a much more modern interfaced um, uh, LXDE, uh, which it used to be based on. So here we can open a terminal. We can create a new folder or file. Uh, we can show the hidden folders. We can show or hide desktop items. We can create a launcher or see the desktop preferences. So here's your icon sizes. So if you want to bump your icon sizes, you can do that right here. And uh, selecting their fonts and then the margins of our workspace. Uh, we can actually go over and see what our background looks like. Of course, uh, I'm going to chain keep the wallpaper where it is. I don't know if there's extra wallpapers or not. Let's see. Um, no, there's a bunch of that, just a whole bunch of that. So let's cancel that. And then you can enable a wallpaper slideshow with, from a specified folder. And then you can add uh, other various icons onto your system there as well if you like adding those, which I personally do. Now, one of the things that I found on this on both the installation media and once it's installed is it doesn't seem to know what to do with the desktop icons. So it always gives you the screen. Just hit execute. And this is going to open up the user's manual here. So um, I'm not sure if there is a way we might be able to come in like we do with other things. Here you go. Make this file executable. It's, it's already checked, but let's see what happens if we don't. So I always have to go in and just hit that execute button on a desktop file. I'm not sure if that's intentional or uh, accidental or whatever else. So that's what we have over there. We have a settings panel or configuration setting. So here's our basic appearance. Now these are applying to the LXQT desktop environment, not uh, uh, globally to the system itself. So you can see what the settings look like. Here's GTK styles. So you can do themes for two, themes for three. Here's your QT style. So you have a variety of, of different options inside of there. As far as the software, it does feel like a complete system. Some of you might like that, some of you might not. I was actually surprised with how much software is packaging. The, the ISO itself is still, I think, under 2 gigabytes. I think it was 1.9 gigabyte, if I remember. So, you know, what is causing Ubuntu to become this gargantuan monster of 4.5 gigabytes on a minimal install? I just can't figure it out. Um, but we have uh, we have a few different terminals installed. We have Feather Notes, Feather Pad. Um, we have uh, the Pac-Man, Qt File Manager, um, uh, X Archiver, X Burn. We have the Zim Desktop Wiki. What is that? Mm, sure. Okay, I guess we can just make some notes. Not familiar with that particular application. Of course, I can just hover over it. It's a text editor, I guess. Okay. Here's games. Okay. We have under graphics, we have Flameshot. Nice screen uh, screenshotting tool. I actually have this on my uh, Manjaro Raspberry Pi. It works pretty nice. Um, and then we have GIMP. We have Inkscape, LX Imager. We have LibreDraw. We have uh, a scanning application, and we have another image viewer. We have Firefox. We have HexChat IRC. We have Thunderbird, Qubit, Torrent. And basic network configuration, full suite of LibreOffice, and a tabbed document viewer. And then we have Pulse Audio volume control. My guess is this is running Pipewire, being as it's based on the latest Debian. Uh, we can check that. Here's KDE Partition Manager, Kernel Remover. Hmm, interesting. Only one kernel is installed. Nothing can be done. All right. Well, if you have multiple kernels installed, you can do that and <laughs> remove other kernels. There you go. And we have a process manager. We have our manual. And we have a who watch. 
So overall, our system works pretty well. We have a variety of different tools and whatnot available for us. Bluetooth manager, print settings, synaptic package manager. So you'll notice that like synaptic package manager is probably the only software installer on here. So um, if you're going to be looking to do anything, let's see if we do software. Nope. So I didn't get anything looking at looking for the word software, but if I want to pull up the synaptic package manager and here is the pretty much the only one that we have uh, for our package manager here. Let me expand this out. A little difficult sometimes to expand these out. So here's upgrades. Let's see, mark all upgrades. So if you want to do the upgrade, this is where you're upgrading your software. Now the upgrading your software may not change the like roll the whole distribution. You're gonna to need to run your uh, dist upgrade to do that one. But you can see that uh, here it's going to go through and at least upgrade the single software packages. Uh, and then you hit you apply and it's going to go ahead and uh, mark all those. Now really the best way to um, uh, run, the, run the updates is going to be inside of your terminal. So just pull up one of the terminal editors here. And uh, what you're going to need to do is, uh, since we don't have any, uh, if I do uh, sudo apt dist upgrade and it asks for a password you'll say I'm not in the sudo's file so you're gonna do su and then enter your password this logs you in basically as the super user and now you can do your apt is it dist upgrade I think that is the correct correct term so there you go so you can see now it wants to download a bunch of files and run the system upgrades we're not going to run the system upgrades right at this time what I do want to show you is where the scripts are so if we do just where we are of course we're in our home directory so if we back up to here and back up to here you'll see the um, uh, we should be seeing an sbin directory over here so go into the sbin and this is actually where those scripts are going to be. So this is that remove non-free script that removes everything from the system that's not non-free. The problem is, of course, this is a lot of things in here. And a lot of these are just common uh, system files. So it'd be really nice for me to see what are the actual scripts that they've added. I can't find a unified reference for any of those. So uh, that's the one thing I would really like to see. So I can kind of see, is there something in here that makes things a little bit faster or not? I know their user's manual does have a lot of information about how to change your partitions around, how to move your home directory. There's a ton of useful information. So definitely this is really good. If you want to stay on that Debian branch, you like apt better, uh, you're looking for that more, I don't know, maybe call it stability of Debian. Um, instead of using an arch system this makes a lot of sense if you need to rely on the later packages or the latest hardware so this definitely makes for a good tool and a good distribution my overall thoughts of seduction i do really like this uh, this is a really nice uh, really nice platform it strikes a nice balance it seems very stable uh, just playing around with it we have a variety of different um, uh, options for our desktops not just the ones that they have available as the downloads but you can install other desktop environments and their own their uh, users manual does have a section in it about installing extra desktop environments the thoughts and considerations about doing that so this is definitely one that uh, if you're looking to dig deeper learn a little bit about the terminal but still have a good solid GUI system this might be a distribution you have a look at so I do wish they provided a more comprehensive list of those scripts but overall this is a great project and I definitely encourage you to have a look let me know your thoughts about seduction and other things like that in the comments down below thank you for watching this video from switched to Linux this channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.